And so connectivity is more than just an all or nothing affair. We can talk about how connected a graph is. So let's begin with two vertices. Two vertices are said to be K edge connected. If they remain connected, if you remove fewer than K edges from the graph. Let's look at an example. So here's a graph and let's focus on those two vertices that I've highlighted in magenta. They are one edge connected because they're connected and if you remove one edge they become disconnected. So they're one edge connected but they're not two edge connected. If in particular if I delete that edge um, then they no longer is a path between the two magenta vertices. Um, here's an example of two vertices, these two green vertices that are two edge connected. That means that I can remove any number of edges less than two, which is to say one edge, and they'll stay connected. So I could try, but if, it, if I do remove two vertices, they become disconnected. So with those two vertices, now I, uh, those two edges judiciously selected, there will no longer be a path between the two green vertices. Uh, for a three edge connected example, we can look at these two uh, vertices highlighted in purple and discover that we can remove any two edges and they're still going to be stuck together. You can kind of see that because they're in a cycle here and in a cycle there and in order to break them you're going to have to break both cycles, um, which means uh, breaking uh, two edges to break two cycles. And uh, if you remove three, on the other hand, you can't separate them. So if I cut these three edges, um, I might have been more obvious to cut that one, but I'm doing it this way to make it interesting. If I cut these three edges, then in fact, I wind up with no path between those two vertices. So they are two edge connected. Um, uh, they are three edge connected, but not four edge connected, meaning you can remove two, but you can't remove three and keep them connected. For a whole graph, um, a whole graph is k-edge connected if every two vertices are k-edge connected. Um, uh, and the point of this degree of connectivity is to measure, one, one motivation of it is that if you think of uh, this graph as indicating uh, a communication network where vertices are centers that are sending and receiving data and an edge corresponds to having some kind of a channel or cable between uh, adjacent centers, then connectivity is a measure of how many of your channels or cables can go down and still have the property that every center of information can communicate with every other center of information. So how many connections can fail without cutting off communication? Here's an example of a graph that globally, this is, was the graph that we saw before that has some vertices that are one edge connected, others that are two, other, uh, others that are three, but the graph as a whole is only one edge connected because there's this one edge that can be removed that splits it in two. This graph, on the other hand, a modification of it, is two edge connected. Now I can remove any one edge and no matter what single edge I remove, this will remain a connected graph which makes it two edge connected. Now there's a corresponding definition of vertex connected, uh, meaning it's K vertex connected if you can remove any number of vertices up to uh, K and it will stay connected. If it's K vertex connected, it's certainly K edge connected, but not conversely. Um, if here's a graph that is two uh, edge vertex connected, but one vertex connected. If you remove uh, one vertex, it breaks. If you remove that vertex, it breaks. But on the other hand, it needs two edges to be cut in order to uh, split the graph in two. The complete graph on n vertices um, is, uh, uh, to cut it up, it requires cutting uh, n minus one edges, and in fact, n minus one vertices to break it up because everything is connected to everything else. So Kn is as uh, connected a graph on n vertices as you can possibly have, but of course it's got a lot of edges. It's got n choose two edges or about n times n minus one over two edges. Another interesting structure is the n-dimensional hypercube. So the square is a two-dimensional and the cube, the, the ordinary cube is the H3 has uh, has 
eight vertices and looks like a cube. Uh, and in general, the way we define Hn is that its vertices are the binary strings of length n. And two vertices are adjacent if they differ in one bit. They're the same except that in one co coordinate, one of them has a one and the other has a zero. In that case, you can make the edges adjacent. Um, it turns out that the, uh, the n-dimensional hypergraph is n vertex connected. And this is worked out in a homework or class problem. So to summarize, um, well, actually, before we summarize, there's a basic theorem that we're not going to prove. It's just a little bit too much of a challenge for us to get into. Uh, it would take a, maybe a couple of lectures, is to prove Menger's theorem, uh, which says that um, a graph is k uh, vertex connected uh, if and only if uh, you can connect any two vertices with completely non-overlapping different paths, k of them. So um, if two vertices are k-connected, then there are uh, completely separate, k-separate paths connecting them, which means, of course, that you have to cut each of the paths in order to separate them. And a similar theorem goes for edge-connected. So to summarize uh, about some graphs that we know about, uh, if given that connectivity measures fault tolerance in a network, we're interested in, well, how many edges did it take to achieve this level of connectivity? So the number of edges is kind of a measure of the cost. And the complete graph on n vertices is n minus 1 connected, but it has about n squared over 2 edges. The hypercube, now if we're going to be talking about graphs of size n to be uniform, the hypercube uh, on uh, Hn has two to the n vertices. So if we want an n vertex version, we're talking about H sub log n, which has n vertices. Uh, and then it has about n log n over two edges. So it's got fewer edges than the complete graph, but uh, a significantly less, um, exponentially less connectivity. Uh, the grid is simply um, uh, like the xy uh, uh, axis uh, or the xy plane with points at integers so that every node is connected to every uh, to four adjacent nodes to one up one down one right and one left now of course when you get to the edge of it if you make it finite the ones on the edge are only going to be two connected so you have to wrap it around in the shape of a donut to really make it work with a finite graph but if you do that then the thing is four connected um, four uh, edge connected but n only has two n edges. And then a cycle is two connected. A cycle of size n uh, is two connected with n vertices. And finally, trees, which we'll talk about next time, um, are the smallest possible connected graphs. They are one connected. Indeed, everything is in a tree is connected. Um, and they only have n minus one edges. But if you remove one edge, it splits. And that's sort of the summary of the k-connectivity story.